Hello, welcome to another Writerly Witterings. I've been sent various questions, and Orlando in Mexico has asked me, could I make a video on note-taking? Yeah, why not? Okay, here's a video on note-taking. Okay, so taking notes and making useful, sensible notes. Over here, I've got all the notes that I started doing for my next book, which is coming out next year. Excellent book it will be too. I hope you enjoy it. And you can see I've got a whole bunch of notes here of different characters and so on. Now, this is all very interesting. How do you get to a state where you've got all the notes that you need? Now, one of the things you can do, obviously, is go and look through information that's on the internet. However, I don't trust information on the internet for the simple reason that nobody's checked it. So what I tend to go for is books. If you've got a book, the book will have been checked by the author, hopefully. It will have been checked by an editor. It will have been checked by at least one copy editor. If it's non-fiction, it will have been checked by a couple of fact-checkers as well before it goes to a proof editor. There are a number of different stages it goes through. So you can generally trust information you get in books. But I hate scribbled notes inside books because it really irritates me. What One thing I've found for taking notes is these things. Book darts which you can get on the internet from this firm Pepelianaceous. They're a wonderful outfit, and they sell you these things which have little folded bits of metal. And you won't be able to see that too clearly, so I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's in use. In here, for example, where there's areas I want to look at, I've got a paper dart, and it points to the line I wanted to make a note of, and it also sticks out so that... When you're looking at the book, you can see exactly where you've put the notes. You can put them either side, obviously. And the great thing about them is you can pull them out and reuse them wherever you want. So, for example, if I want to shift that one to here. There you go. If you, you can push them all the way down. If you have them sticking out a little bit, I find it a bit easier because then you can just reach straight to the relevant point. So that's one thing you can do. So how do you make sure that what you're making notes of is relevant? Now this here is a set of the notes that I've been making for the book that'll be coming out next year from Simon & Schuster. Now not all of this is in the book. As you can see it's a fairly extensive series of notes. So how do I know what's relevant for the book? Well, first of all, I start out with a simple timeline. I want to know all of the period around that. So I've got my timeline there that tells me the broad sweep of the period I'm looking at. Then it's a case of going through a book and every time I find something that just stands out to me, I'll make a note of that. It's not a case of something that I know is going to be used in the book. It's anything that could possibly be relevant that will fit in. And I'll scrawl huge amounts, which is why I have my fountain pens. Thank you, Mr Visconti. Um, so you need to make a note of all of the things, really, that you think leap out at you. What is actually going to end up in the book? There's two sets of things. One is the stuff that is immediately relevant because it refers to the period, it refers to the type of warfare perhaps, it refers to the religion, it refers to alchemy, it refers to beliefs in medicine, it doesn't matter what it is, anything at all that is relevant for that period. The second level things are the things that stand out for me. So for example in one of my books I had a discussion about a man watching um, a bull being baited by mastiffs. 
Now, the reason why that stood out for me was not because it was a sign of barbarism and cruelty and everything else. It's because I was able to put into the chap's mind what somebody at that time would have thought, which was not that they thought it was fun because it was cruel and they were gambling. It was more relevant because they thought it was a way of, if you put it like this, if you go to market, you would buy the bull that had been baited most significantly uh, you'd buy the meat from that because they thought it tenderised the meat if they exercised the bull before it died. So you'd go to the market, you'd watch the bulls being baited and you think, that one's fighting well, that one's probably going to have really good steaks, I'll buy a bit of that one when it's been butchered. Stupid idea, perhaps nowadays, but it was something that was in the medieval mind. It's that sort of thing that can startle the reader and just jerk them away from their comfort zone and make them look at something in a slightly different light that I find is most relevant. So you go through, you get your wadge of notes like this, what do you do then? Well, obviously the first thing you've got to do is go through and weed them out. Not everything you've got in your notes is going to be relevant. Now, what I tend to find is that when I've got a lot of stuff that's really interesting but not relevant, I don't want to leave that out. So what I'll almost always do is have an author's note and I'll throw all of the stuff into that. But the other thing is that You'll see that all of these pages have got these little T cutouts here. That's because I tend to use Atoma. Now, this is an Atoma binder. It is the most useful, I find, way of keeping everything in one place, but in a good logical order. You get dividers with atomas, so you can separate things out into the relevant notes, the secondary notes, the more important notes and everything else. I actually use it for plotting out my stories as well now, because you can get atomas in all different sizes. The separation between each of the rings is the same. But what's nice is, apart from the fact you can open it all the way around, you can also pull your pages out and then put them back in wherever you want. So I can take pages out of this A5 Atoma binder and stick them into my A4 binder. I can have notes, chapter headings and everything else on the small binder. I can use um, an A6 notepad and use that for just simple note taking and stick that into the main binder. I can play around with it however I want. I find that works for me. Um, but the simple message is, I think, that there is no straightforward way of working out what research is going to be the best way. The only thing you can do is take a lot of notes. Don't forget the little page darts that keep you in your book. So you can go through reading your book, put the page darts in, go back as a second process and make a note of the ones that are most relevant for you by putting them into your smaller Atoma book. And then you can collate all of them into your large format pages. And hopefully by the end of all that, you'll know which elements are the ones you want to use in your story and which aren't. It is very difficult. Um, I tend to find that I have at least three quarters of all the notes that I take don't end up in the book. But it's all useful research, and you may not use it in this book, but even if you don't use it in this book, those notes are still relevant, they're still up here, they will direct your writing for future books, and also you can make use of those notes in future books. There's been a number of times, I, I still reckon that in my second book, the research I did for that, I used only about a fifth or a sixth of all of the research in that book, but the rest of it directed the rest of the series for the next five or six books. So it's not wasted time or effort, it's still worthwhile doing it. And having said all that, I hope that was worthwhile. I was waffling slightly, you won't have noticed because you're far too polite, but um, it's very difficult talking about things that come so naturally and trying to analyse them and describe what you're doing. So I apologise if it sounds like I was waffling, but um, work on the, on the different stages. Make your notes in the book, write out your notes, analyse those notes, see what are most relevant, and then focus in on the notes that are most relevant for the book that you're trying to write. You may well find that actually by doing all that, your book changes completely, but you end up with a much, much better book. So, 
that's that. Thanks very much. Don't forget I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all those other things. You know the sort of stuff. If you want to ask any questions, do please put a comment down the bottom here. Um, if if you'd like to share it and like it, I'd be grateful because it all helps. And apart from that, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot.